morning. Hey, what's up? Are you okay? Yeah, I thought maybe we could go catch lunch. My treat. I misspoke the other day out of frustration. Our friendship is important to me. You can't just force me back into the friendship we had before all this. I said I needed time. Respect that, please. I miss you, Kim. It hasn't been easy for me. Like, I lost both of my best friends. <laughs> it seems to be a thing, giving my life to Christ and losing someone dear to me. Oh, no, Kim. Bad joke. <laughs> How about this? Join me for a run and we can get lunch afterwards. That's a hard bargain. Well, that's what it is. I do have to get rid of some baby weight. Deal. Love to go visit Nathan with you. I think it'll lift his spirits. And we can pray for him. Pray together. Yes. It's amazing seeing how God is transforming you, Kim. Such a blessing being able to watch it happen. It hurts at times. Is that normal? Yes, girl. That refining process. But how new we are in Christ. Better. So don't give up. So, what's really going on with Eli's... What are you doing again? Baby dedication. Is it weird that I'm confused myself? No. We'll always be learning from God. Sometimes, what we hear from others can confuse us on what God really requires us to do. Keith doesn't want him to be baptized. He doesn't believe in it. And I'd like for you and Nathan to be his godparents. I wasn't sure if you'd come. Well, a baby dedication would work in favor of you both, right? A baby isn't baptized at a baby dedication, but you are in essence dedicating the child back to God. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just giving Eli back to God. <laughs> Presenting him to the Father in front of the body of Christ, it's special to me. <sighs> Hannah presented her son Samuel to the Lord, and so did Mary and Joseph. It would mean the world to us if you'd accompany us in making this commitment as his godmother. Look, I might have my issues with you, but I am all the way down with my baby boy. <laughs> what does Keith believe exactly? Nothing. At least with Juan, I didn't have to worry about church. He was a Christian. Who beat you? Sorry. No, it's okay. I seem to always get myself into bad relationships. Hey, we all do. I like to say bad situations. I'm not sure how to move forward with this. Do I just go against my husband? Concerning Eli, I personally think you should allow him to make that choice once he comes to know God for himself. Like, 
let him choose to do it as a teenager or whenever God sparks up in his life. But I don't know. Run it by pastor. I'm still new to all this. Being new doesn't mean you don't know anything. I'm not even sure how to move forward in my marriage with Keith either. I was reading in 1 Corinthians the other day, and it said, if a Christian woman has a husband who is an unbeliever and he is willing to continue living with her, she must not leave him. For she brings holiness to her marriage. Your children, Eli, would not have a godly influence, but now they are set apart. Yes, chapter seven. I know I made a mistake. I knew the word prior to marrying him. The amazing thing though, is that through our mistakes, God can shine so bright that he can turn them into gems, if we allow him to. I'll pray for you, Selena. I forgive you. And I love you, Selena. I'm going to be here for you. I'll be steadfast in my prayers for you and your family. It is an honor to be able to pray for you, my sister. <laughs>
maybe I could be of some help. We used to be sort of friends before me and your mom. What happened? I found out you don't believe in God. Do you think being standoffish me helps your case? What I'm trying to say is, do you think your behavior makes you want to learn about God? I hear these great things about Jesus, then I come across as followers and I'm turned off completely. I can see your point. A little bit. Can't we agree to disagree for the time being? I guess. Would you join us in our prayers? It would mean a lot to God. A starting point. And it won't kill you. Okay, I can do that. Oh, Kimberly. Yeah, she'll help. You should call her. Have her come get you. You want to, but... You can't, because you lied to her again. You're a liar. You lied to me for years. To Kimberly, to Sophia. That's all you're good at. Lying. You're not real. You're not real. Well, how can you be honest with anyone if you can't even be honest with yourself? You keep fighting it, but you always end up right back here, parked in front of the liquor store, wanting a drink. Stop. Please. I know I'm rotten through and through as far as my old sinful nature is concerned. No matter which way I turn, I can't seem to make myself do right. You're not real. I want to, but I can't. <laughs> so then stop playing yourself. Be real and accept who you are. You'll be free. Isn't it draining trying to be perfect all the time? So what you want to drink? What harm will that do? You've had a bad day. Derek is going to take Sophia from you. Kimberly will never Trust you again. And Sophia hates you. Then there's your husband.
it getting any easier, Lord? I'm doing what you ask of me. Yet I still struggle day to day. I don't want to, but I thought that was your car. What are you doing here? That CVS is a family pharmacy picking up our monthly meds. That's what happens when you get old. <laughs> you aren't old. And you? In the middle of a relapse. In the middle, meaning you didn't relapse. God is good. <laughs> the middle is a bad place to be. But it isn't the doing place, my child. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Some people see Paul as this great follower of Christ, but fail to see that he went through pain, trials, and hardships. But in the midst of those times, God used him in such a mighty way. God uses our trials, hardships, and doubts to bring us back to remembering that we need him and with more to learn, more areas of trusting in him. Paul pleaded with the Lord to take the thorn away. And the Lord said to him, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Just because you decided to say yes to the Lord doesn't mean that your life will be perfect. Jesus suffered greatly, and he is the Son of God. He suffered, but he was still able to make it through with his Heavenly Father. He knew that God would never fail him or forsake him. He is our great example of going through it. <laughs> wow. It's like God brought you here right on time with an answer to my prayer. He often works like that. <sighs> so it doesn't get any easier. Some areas will, but you will always struggle with temptation and discouragement. Your life will not be picture perfect, but the difference is knowing that God has you. He will never leave or abandon you. God is for you. Jesus did it already, and you are saved, healed, and delivered. As the word says, who shall free me from this life that is dominated by sin? Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, in the midst of ups and downs, we must always remember to give God praise for what he is doing in all circumstances of our life. We trust Him. You must take your focus off the problem and put it back on God. And remember who He is and how He just delivered you a few minutes ago, a day ago, a week ago, or even a month ago. And that's for that. Amen? Amen. Now go on home to that beautiful family of yours. <laughs> well, nope. God is working even if you don't see it. Be patient and prayed up. Thank you so much, First Lady. I love you, and I will be praying for you. And remember to wear the full armor of God at all times. The enemy will be coming for you now that you're walking in your calling. Hey. Hi. Do you really think it's a good idea leaving Sophia alone with Keith? Yeah, he's her stepdad. Do you really know him? Look, it's fine. I don't like it. I'm sorry about that. However, there's no way around that. You drinking and driving? What? No! Then what's that? It's not what you think.
Well, it looks like it to me. You can see it's not open. Yet. What the hell? I don't have to answer to you. Please leave. I want Sophia. And you can have her this weekend. No. Custody. Tarek, go home. I'm serious. You look tired. Go home. I'm gonna fight for her. And I'll win. Win with what? You don't work anymore. You aren't married. And let's be real, I know all about your shady past. Everything that happened in college, you want that coming up in court? Because if you try and take my daughter from me, I'll use everything I know against you. Now that sounds nice. Nine months of traveling and time away to focus on just you and God? It was fun. I had to come back. The whole Nathan situation. He needed me. How's he doing? I haven't spoken to him in a few days. Selena and I plan on going to see him this weekend. Selena? Y'all cool? <laughs> Baby steps. I'm trying to exhibit the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace. <laughs> now, we'll probably never be as close as before, but the Holy Spirit is nudging me to stay around. I've been praying for her. That's great, Kim. Tomorrow afternoon, I'm gonna be looking around town at a few condos. If you're free, you can tag along? I'm free. This is a bit awkward. Where do we start with this? It's dating, right? <laughs> well, let's start with our first official date. Dinner tonight, 8 o'clock. Why so late? That's dinner time, right? No, that's eat late and get dessert in my room type of set of crap. Nope, dinner at 4 o'clock. <laughs> 4 o'clock. Yep, that way we can end the date way before nightfall. Girl, you are a hoot. I'm dead serious. Look, I'm not sleeping with you, Hakeem. Let me make that clear up front. I am not the one. I figured that out a while ago, Kim. We haven't even kissed and it's been a year. Good things are worth waiting for. Yes, they are. So we have a deal? Four o'clock date times? I'd go out with you at 4 a.m. in the morning, girl. You should already know that I just want to be where you are. I'm so glad you reached out to me, baby. How are you doing? It's been hard, Laverne. Thanks for meeting me. Oh, God. I hope you've been through that. You're cheating, being gay. Mom? Been... Kimberly, hey. Have a seat. I reached out to your mother. I needed someone to talk to. Uh huh. Finishing up on your run? Yeah. You know, Nathan's been calling Michelle. That's good. How is he? I haven't picked up. What? Kim, it's been too much for her, the cheating, being gay. I understand that. However, he needs someone to talk to. He is still your husband. I filed for divorce. Are you sure that's best with everything that's going on? He's been on suicide watch twice. And that isn't her fault. I say cut your losses. Yeah, well, what does God say? Nothing. So you're gonna follow what my mom says? No offense. Men taken. We know Nathan. He didn't do this. He slept with that man. And that's a sin, Missy, a big one. letting things with Nathan get to you, baby. Calm down, please. 
I know this whole Nathan situation has you in an uproar. You're confused. When you walk the middle line, that's what'll happen. The middle line? Either you're for God or you're not. You can't be in the middle. Look, that woman in there is lying. I'm not talking about Michelle. I'm talking about you. I know what the word says. But do you believe it? Yes. Then stop this mess. Stop what mess? Praying for a brother in Christ who has fallen down is mess? Showing compassion for someone who's hurting and broken is mess? Is that the mess you're talking about? I am not going to be a hypocrite. I refuse to be one of those believers who's up in church screaming and running up and down the aisles, yet refuses to step out of my comfort zone to help someone in need because of how it might look. Well, you better tread lightly, child. I love you, Mom. But I love God more. And this, this right here, is not how Jesus would be. He'd still be trying to give Nathan a chance at the well of the living water. He didn't just die for your sins, but for Nathan's too. I won't turn my back on him. Hello? Hey, beautiful. Hey, so what's up? I want to be the first to tell you that I'm fighting for custody of Sophia. Why? I mean, Selena doesn't have any issue with you seeing her. She's drinking. Again. No. And driving. But she's leaving Sophia alone with Keith. I'm not comfortable with that. I didn't know all that. My lawyer's drawn up the paperwork. How are you going to handle all that and your job? Not working. Huh? Chosen to take some time away. Half truths again. But you know, I don't even care. No. If you give me a second, I'd like to tell you the whole story. I don't have time for it, nor do I care. Will you be a character witness for me? I wouldn't make a good character witness for you or Selena. Depending on the day, I either hate you or I forgive you. I'm still praying my way <coughs> Interesting. I didn't know you were a drug dealer, Jamal. Come on, you'll feel better if you talk about it. I really don't want to talk about him on our first date. Okay. He's sick. I didn't notice it until today. He's lost all this weight and... He won't tell you. Yeah. Why is that? He doesn't want your pity, Kim. He wants your love. Oh, well, the love is gone. Are you sure about that? I don't trust him. Trusting him has nothing to do with loving him. In my case, it does. My love has grown from trust. When he lied, not once, but twice, it was cut at the root. Do you think your mother knows what's going on? I don't know. I'd have to ask her. I can't believe you brought me here on our first date. A track? Well, that's where we first met at. A track. It's special. Aw. I was such a... B. A fine one, though. So what does dating look like for you? Getting to know you. Growing closer with each other. Spending time with you. How do we do that long distance? That won't be an issue. Huh? I'm moving here permanently. What? When? Two weeks. But what about your daughter? She and her mother moved from New York. I'll be able to get her during holidays and most summers. Seriously, she loves you. She's excited about seeing you again. No. 
that was worth waiting for. Yeah. Hold up, boy. We talked about this. Boy, please. You'll have to put a ring on it and say I do before you get anything else from me. What are you doing? Well, you'll have to catch me for another kiss. Thank God Eli is down finally. He thinks he's going to miss something. <laughs> I thought about what you said and prayed on it. I think Eli should make the choice on his own. Okay. I noticed you're praying with us at dinner. Uh, I made a deal with Sophia. Oh. I've been going to church with you for the past few months, Lena. Mm. Yes. And I don't want to go anymore. You mean like never? Christmas. Because I know the kids would want me to. But that's pretty much it. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. I tried it. I'm done. You have to go. <laughs> I have to. Even if I don't believe. You just want me to go for show. Yes! Why do you try so hard to be something you're not for those people? Will you just go? Sit in the back, that's all. Sorry. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for your grace. I need you for a week, Lord. Help me to not let my emotions rule over me so that you may guide me. Forgive me, Lord, for looking to others for approval versus looking to you for approval. I apologize for trying to force you to go to church. You should go because you want to. Not for me, but for God. Not at my time, but at his time. Can I pray for you? Sure. Should we still even try to go see him? I'm not sure. It's been strange. I go from talking to him almost daily to nothing. Maybe something's going on at the prison. Should we call? Yeah, I'll do that today. I'm not sure how to bring this up with you. Is this about Derek and Sophia? Yes. I don't want to be caught in the middle of it. Okay, I understand. Things could get dirty if he presses me on this. Dirty? Everyone assumes I'm the only liar in the midst of this crazy family we have here. Uh-huh. But I'm not. And that's all I'm comfortable saying at this time. Fine. All this drama is too much right now. I don't care what's going on between you two. I really don't. Okay. However, I do think you need to be mindful about your drinking. So let me talk to you about that. Did he tell you the whole story, though? What else is there? You're drinking again. That's a lie. I will admit that I've been struggling, but I haven't fallen off the wagon yet. I'm telling the truth. Fine. Why do you trust him and not me? We both have lied to you, Kim. Why am I not given the benefit of the doubt, too? 
you have a point. Honestly, do you think Sophia should be taken away from me? I know I'm a mess, but being a mother has always been the most important thing to me. I agree. I don't think Sophia should be taken away from you. This doesn't make sense to me. Why can't you both just share time with her? Derek seems to want more. Well, you don't hold back. That's your baby, and you better fight for her. Plus, there's something up with Derek, health-wise. I'm not sure he's even going to be able to... I'm not saying anymore, because I don't want to be in the middle of it. I won't be a character witness for him or you. I pray that you'll keep focus on what's best for Sophia. Okay. I understand. That's strange. I know number called me like 20 times. Are you? <sighs> Prayer works, Kevin. Thank you. <laughs> when did this happen? A few hours ago. I tried to call. Do you need to smack my booty too? <laughs> my lord, this is real. Yes. My goodness. I got you both back in my life again. Yes. Forever, baby girl. <laughs> Ladies, snap out of it. I'm free. I just... I can't believe it. Are you sure you're not on the run? I swear. Does Michelle know? What's wrong? Now you're scaring me. Is she okay? I knew you'd come back here. What did you do? I knew you. I knew your stupid ass would show up. The altercation with Chris was funny. My God. A few days ago, at the cafe, she was with my mom. It was this feeling I got in the pit of my stomach. I just couldn't piece it all together. But God did. So she just confessed? Yeah. I mean, I'm not like her biggest fan, but this is hard to swallow. Feel partially guilty for it. 
She knew about me and Chris. I would never talk to her about it. It was such a confusing time, and I was so ashamed of what I was doing. When she saw him at the wedding, she lost it. And you know the rest. My lord. Felt like it was my fault. I drove her to this, and I was willing to take the blame. No, Michelle did that on her own. But my actions pushed her. Is she in custody? Yes. Does she have a lawyer? I think they cut a deal. How long? Life over the death penalty. They honestly were going to try it as a hate crime if she didn't comply with them. I spoke up for her. Well, Nathan, you were still trying to help her, even though... I just keep thinking. Like, none of this would have happened if I had never met Chris. It's my fault. Good morning, Miss Liver. How did you swim? Pretty well, actually. That's good. I guess Derek and Kimberly's house has turned into a halfway house. I promise to look for a place. Nathan, you can stay here as long as you need. Derek, Kimberly, and I are just happy you're free. Don't be too rush. I find that the morning times are the best time of quiet for me. I hear him in such a different tone. <laughs> you must think I'm crazy. <laughs> I know this is hard for you, but I want to let you know that your prayers for me were not in vain. You pray for me every day, crying out for a healing for me. I wanted you to be the first to know that God has started a healing way deep in my heart, Miss Levar. God heard you, and he answered. He hears the cries of his children, and he answers prayers. God is in the heart business, all right. He's changing my heart as we speak, Nathan. <laughs> Jesus came for the sick. And I am sick at heart. I'm broken. In need of a healing. We all are. Jesus is the only one who can heal me. I'm ready to give it all to him, whatever <laughs> it takes. <laughs> the seed has been planted on fertile soil. <laughs> and produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even a hundred times. Let's start watering that with the living word. Will you be my accountability partner? I'm Nathan. I'd be so honored. Thank you. Hey, I see I didn't teach you that taking fries from a hungry person can get you cut in prison. <laughs> no. <laughs> so what's next for you, Nathan? Leaving Michelle, right? She's already filed the paperwork. You just have to sign it. You know, it's true how sin in one's life can spread out and affect everyone in a person's life. I'm not sure what to do. Do I stay? Leave? You stay. The community knows the truth. I'm talking about Michelle. Well, she cheated on you and you cheated on her. You're both in the right to file for divorce. But take it to the Lord in prayer and let him direct your next steps. And pray for her. Michelle is going to need it. I know my purpose now. Prison ministry. That's amazing, Nathan. <laughs> but what about, uh, you know? Confused. 
but focused on Jesus. I'm not going to just give in to the temptation. I'm going to run straight to Jesus, relying on his grace to see me through. God didn't make me like this. He has a great purpose for me, and he is my strength. I believe in the healing power of prayer. Amen. That's what we're going to do. We're going to pray steadfastly for healing, direction, and protection over our lives. Yes. And time. Give yourself time, Nathan. Change doesn't happen overnight. It's a pruning process with God. Go at his pace. Selena, consider yourself served. Sorry. I'm ready. Not this weekend. What? I said not this weekend. Now go back inside. Why are you here? I'm sorry. I'm sorry too, Michelle. I wasn't much of a husband. And you were right. Still doesn't make what I did right. I killed someone. God's not going to forgive that. Discouragement. One of the devil's favorite tactics. Makes you look at the problem rather than God. <laughs> but God. Jesus died on the cross for that very sin, Michelle. We have to get in the business of making our relationship and his death on the cross for us more personal. Was Paul not forgiven? What about Moses? But I'm not going to be somebody great, Nathan. Says who? God has a plan and a purpose for each of us. Hey, no hands. You killed someone. That's bad. Then you lied and put it on me. Not too good. But you did come clean in time. You admitted to what you did, and you stand ready to accept responsibility for it. To me, that shows you're sorry and trying to make things right. I am sorry. I know that I've grieved the Father's heart. I just don't know how to move on from here. How can I just be like, Lord, forgive me for taking a life and move on with my life like it never happened? I killed someone, Nathan. I did that. You do that by setting your mind upon our Savior. Make Him the center of your life, your sole purpose for living. Let your life be a testimony of how good He is, how great His mercy is. See, God is in the business of using every situation in our lives for His will, even if we don't seem to get it or see it. I don't know what I can do here in prison. You can start by telling anyone who will listen about Jesus, about Calvary, who he is, what he did, and who they are in him. You can start by praying over the staff, the people locked up and hurting, the ones looking for hope and joy in all the wrong places. Let your life be an explanation of how good he is in all situations. The joy of the Lord is with you always, Michelle. You don't have to be in church to praise him. Help the body of Christ right here in this facility. You won't have to do it alone. I'm going to be here praying for you. I'm going to help. 
I plan to talk to the pastor about starting a prison ministry right here. Why don't you do that for me, Nathan? Even after everything? Because Jesus did it for me. And if he did it for me, a sinner, then I can do the same thing and forgive too. Time's up. <laughs> Come on, try it. Football? At least I can dribble a basketball. Why football? You never play with Derek. <sighs> no, not really. This was his thing. Track and field was mine. Let me teach you a few things about football. I told you I'd suck at this. We should just run. One throw. What am I supposed to do? Throw it. Not bad, baby. You're not the first one to show me a thing or two about football. But you are the cutest. <laughs> so, what did you do during your time away? Traveled here and there. <laughs> I know that, but what did you do? I ate. A lot. Dinner at the bar? It's late. Okay. I'll call you. I could walk you up to your room if... No, that's fine. Good night. Here I come, New York. Fantastic showing tonight. Thanks. Yeah, I'm glad you came. Me too. It's been a crazy time in my life, so thank you for being so patient. No, thank you. Well, I should go. I fly out early in the morning, and I still need to pack. Last minute like myself. It always comes together, though. True. Well, thanks again. No, no problem. Do you have time for a drink? I would like to talk to you about having a permanent exhibit here in New York. Why, of course. I promise not to keep you too long. Keep me as long as you need me.
Mom? It's late. What? What? Okay, okay. I'm on my way. You can do this. 